So I've got all the equipment to run my particle size analysis operation. But how long do I exactly run it for? Don't worry, I'll explain everything you need to know, so stick around. Hi, I'm Candace Blaker, and I'm the product manager for particle size analysis here at WS Tyler. So how long do I run my sieve analysis for? To put it simply, it depends. That may not be what you wanted to hear, but don't panic. We're still going to help you figure out what is right for you and your process. And luckily, WS Tyler has been a leading innovator of particle size analysis and even invented the original sieve standard in Shaker back in 1914. So in this video, we'll go over the factors for determining the duration of a sieve shaker test, how to calculate the right amount of time to run a sieve analysis, and analyzing your results. The most obvious factor, definitely, the overall size of the sample being run. The more material that's put into a sieve at once, the longer it will take the Rotap to separate the particles and allow them to fall into their respective sieves. Also, if you overload a sieve with a large sample of particles, it'll probably cause that sample to either get bad results or cause blinding in your sieves. You can sieve all types of particles in a sieve shaker, but the shape of each individual particle is going to impact how your analysis goes. Round or nearly round particles will take much less movement and time to fall through than an elongated or irregularly shaped particle. For those elongated or irregularly shaped particles, there are sometimes other actions you need to take to get them to sieve correctly. If the particles aren't oriented correctly, they may not fit through the openings in the sieve mesh properly. The third factor is the particle size distribution of the sample. If a sample has a lot of particles that are close to the same size as the opening in the sieve mesh, these particles may tend to stay in the openings or clog them. This will make the rest of the particles not fall through the openings, effectively reducing the sorting capacity of the sieve. The best way to calculate the sieve shaker's runtime is to run an end of sieving analysis. Performing this analysis will show what the minimum amount of time required to yield consistent results is. Here is how to perform an end of sieve analysis. Start with the actual sieves and a typical amount of the material that will be tested. Select an initial test time, usually three to five minutes, and run a sieve analysis. Record the amount of sample retained or passed on each sieve. Using the same sieves and the same sample, Run the test again, incrementally longer, usually adding one to five minutes to the initial test time. Again, record the results of the sieve analysis. Repeat this process, adding incrementally more time to the Rotap timer until the results of the sieve analysis stop changing by more than half to 1%. This is the end of sieving. Running the test any longer will not significantly affect the result in the analysis. Two scenarios can occur after you've run your sieve analysis. The first is if your individual tests don't level out by changing more than 1%, even after a significant number of iterations. If this is happening to you, it's likely that either the material is not suitable for a sieve analysis, or the sample's breaking down during the test cycle in the Rotap. If your sample's breaking down, there's two solutions available. The first option is to perform a hand sieving analysis, which can be physically difficult for the person performing it, and yields notoriously inconsistent results. The second, and we believe the best option, is to perform the analysis optically using a machine like WS Tyler's computerized particle analyzer. This machine simply allows the particles to fall in front of a camera to measure the size of each particle. By following these procedures, you can determine the fastest test time that will get you consistent, repeatable results, which will create the most efficient sieve testing procedure possible. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, fill out a contact us form so we can answer your specific questions. Just click the link in the description. And if you'd like to learn more about Woven Wire Mesh or our many products, we have a learning center filled with written and video content to make you an expert. Just click the second link and you'll be that expert in no time. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and ring that bell to keep up with all things WS Tyler. Once again, my name is Candace Blaker and I'll see you around in the next video. Bye for now.